Welcome to Programming Your Scanner Part 1. In this video series, I plan to show you some of the basics of how radio systems work, then show you how to apply that knowledge to programming a scanner. The scanner I'll be using is the BCD536HP, Uniden's newest base mobile scanner. However, you should be able to use the concepts I present to program just about any scanner. In Part 1, I'm going to talk about simplex and duplex repeater systems, what we call conventional systems, and show you how to program them into the scanner. In part two, I'll explain how to assign and use quick keys and number tags with the conventional systems we programmed in part one, an important concept specific to unit and scanners for all system types. In part three, I'll cover the basics of trunked radio systems and show how to program these into a scanner. Additional segments may follow. So, let's get started with Part 1, Conventional Systems. I like to start my explanation of radio systems at the most basic level. In this case, I'm going to start with two tin cans and a string. This represents a simplex setup. Basically, simplex means that there is only one signal path and only one person can talk at a time. Now, let's replace those tin cans with transceivers and replace the string with a radio frequency. You now have a simple picture of how radios in services such as the General Mobile Radio Service, the Family Radio Service, CB Radio, some fire ground channels, and similar systems work. In fact, this is how most people think all radio systems work when one person transmits all the tr receivers tuned to the transmit frequency receive the transmission. Only one person can talk at a time, and all services using simplex are line of sight services. In fact, all radio services we are talking about, those operating between 30 MHz and 1.3 GHz, are line-of-sight services, meaning that every receiving radio in the system must have a line-of-sight to the transmitting radio in order to get the transmission. In the case of simplex radio systems, this means that regardless of the power output, range is going to be limited by terrain. These radio waves cannot go through buildings and also cannot penetrate mountains or go past the curvature of the Earth. For example, two people talking on handheld radios, holding the radios so that the antennas are six feet off the ground, are going to have a line of sight range of about six miles on flat, even terrain. To get more range than that, one of the users needs to get to an elevated position, such as a mountain or a building. Increased power can help by allowing signals to better penetrate into structures and through foliage. It can also provide some fill-in coverage by reflecting better off of structures and into RF shadows. But the main way in which radio system ranges are extended are by using repeater systems. Repeater systems are a form of duplex radio communications, meaning that there are two different frequencies being used. Transceivers transmit on one frequency to a repeater location, which is usually on top of a tall structure or mountain. Then, the repeater retransmits the signal on a second frequency, which the receiving radios are tuned to. Since all the radios in the system have to have line of sight to the repeater's antenna and not to each other, range can be dramatically extended. Repeater systems typically provide reliable radio communications across a radius of 30 miles from the repeater. Also, since handheld transceiver power is really limited by being battery operated, a repeater, which is powered from AC power, can provide much higher output power, typically 50 to 200 watts. On repeater systems, the frequency used to transmit to the repeater is called the input frequency, and the frequency used to transmit from the repeater to the field radios is called the output frequency. For scanners, the important frequency for programming is the output frequency, as it is the one that you will be able to reliably receive across the greatest distance. Now, radio frequencies are actually a precious resource. There are never enough frequencies available for everyone who wants to use them. So some clever radio engineer figured out a way for different groups to use the same frequency with limited interference to each other. The idea is to include a low frequency tone along with the transmission. The tone is filtered out by the receivers so you don't hear it. They are called subaudible tones for this reason. In order for a receiver to open squelch on a signal, the signal must include the expected tone. 
Multiple tones are available, so different groups operating on the same carrier frequency won't hear each other as long as they are each using a different subaudible tone. The tone is implemented in several different ways and are called different things by different companies. The primary industry terminology for the tones are CTCSS, which means Continuously Tone Coded Squelch System, and DCS, which means Digitally Coded Squelch. For APCO 25 digital voice frequencies, the code is included as part of the data stream and is called NAC, or Network Access Code. CTCSS, DCS are also primarily commonly called privacy codes, interference eliminator codes, and more. Okay, that's enough radio theory. Let's move over and start putting this knowledge to work. First, let's pick some channels to program. To do that, I'm going to head over to the database at radioreference.com. Now that entire database is already in the BCD536HP, but for now we'll pretend it isn't and program the scanner manually. Tarrant County, Texas is where I am, so to prove that this works at the end of the video by giving us something to listen to, that's what I'm going to program. As you can see, there's quite a bit of information on that page, so I'm not going to program all of it. For now, let's just program in some of the cities. So that you can follow along, I suggest that you go to that page in your browser now. For the video, I'm only going to program in ASL, but you'll be able to apply the same process to program other conventional channels. The first thing we need to do is to get to the manual programming mode in the scanner. We do that by pressing Menu, scrolling to Manage Favorites, and pressing E, or tapping the scroll knob, then selecting New Favorites List and pressing E. By default, the scanner is going to name the favorites list using the current date and time. We'll want to change that to Upman, so let's scroll down to Rename and press E. To clear what's already in the display, press period slash no two times. Now we can enter our favorites list name. Rotate the scroll control to select U. Then press 6 to move the cursor to the right. You can navigate back to a letter you've already entered by pressing 4. Now rotate to select P, press 6, and repeat until you've entered Upman. Then press E to save your changes. Now we want to add a system to the favorites list. To do that, we'll select Review Edit System, then select New System. Here you are presented with a list of the types of systems available to be programmed. Scroll down to select Conventional, then press E two times. Again, the system is named with the current date and time, which will change to be more meaningful. In the BCD536HP, the display and scanning mode shows the system, the department, and the channel name, so you'll want to select names that allow you to easily understand what you are hearing. We'll change the system name to Tarrant using the same method we used to rename the favorites list. First, select Edit Name, then enter Tarrant. Next, we need to create a department for our set of channels. So, scroll down to Edit Department, then select New Department. We want the first department to be ASL, so edit name using the same process we've already gone through a couple of times. At last, we are to a point where we can enter our first channel, the ASL Police channel, on 155.31 MHz. So scroll to Edit Channel, select a New Channel, and input 155.31 as the frequency. The channel name defaults to the frequency you entered, so let's change that to ASL PD. This way, when the scanner stops on the channel during scanning, the display will read Tarrant, ASL, ASL PD. The next thing we'll want to do is set the PL tone for the channel, 77 Hz. To do that, select Set Audio Type, change the setting to Analog Only, select CTCSS, then select 77 Hz. 
If this has, had been a P25 conventional channel, you would have set the channel to digital, then selected the NAC. Or, if you did not know the PL or NAC tone in use, you could have set either mode to search. That's it. We programmed our first channel. Now I'm going to quickly skip ahead. During the skip, I'll program in the rest of the channels on this part of the web page using the city's name as the department and the description as the channel alpha tag. Man, that was a lot of scrolling and button pushing. In reality, I'd normally use Sentinel to program this kind of project, but it's always good to know how to do things manually in case you're stuck out away from your PC and need to change some programming. Now let's set the scanner to scan the favorites list we just programmed. To do that, we'll go to the main menu, set scan selection, select lists to monitor, turn off the full database by selecting it and pressing E, then making sure the upman favorites list is turned on. It will be turned on by default after you create it. Now press avoid or system or just menu back out to exit the menu and we'll see the scanner scanning the cities we've entered from Tarrant County. There are a number of other settings that make it easier to navigate and control what you're listening to. I'll cover those settings in the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.